Here we're gonna look at what I think is a pretty creative and interesting solution to an equally interesting integral. So we've got this integral from zero to infinity of one minus cosine of x times the square root of e minus one over x e to the x. And what's really interesting about this is we've got all of these transcendental numbers and transcendental functions baked into this integral. So we've got e to the x, we've got cosine, we've got an e inside of a square root there. And furthermore, we have an improper integral. But as we'll see, the evaluation of this integral ends up being something that is quite nice and simple. So we're gonna make use of the following tool. So, and that is Euler's formula. So that says that e to the i theta is equal to cosine theta plus i sine theta. And that means that the real part of e to the i theta is equal to cosine theta and the imaginary part of e to the i theta is equal to sine theta. And I should say here that theta is a real number. Okay, great, so let's get into it. So the first thing that I wanna do is something that I've done in some previous videos, which is change this to a double integral. In other words, a single integral within a single integral or an iterated integral. But before doing that, I really wanna think about this integrand as being what I've been calling a zeroth integral. So let's go ahead and do that. So we can notice that the cosine of zero is equal to one. And then this looks like the cosine of x, y evaluated at y equals square root of e minus one. So this is gonna be equal to the integral from zero to infinity, e to the minus x. So I'm gonna bring this e to the x from the denominator up to the numerator. And then rest, the rest of this integrand is this one minus the cosine term over x. So I'm gonna rewrite that as follows. We will have minus one over x and then cosine of x, y evaluated from let's say y equals zero up to y equals the square root of e minus one. Great. And then all of this is within this improper integral so I need a dx right there. So let's just talk our way through that. So notice if we take this minus sign here, we can switch the order of evaluation. So take that minus sign, that'll put the y equals zero on top and the root e minus one on the bottom. But then making that evaluation, we have cosine of zero, which is one, and then cosine of x times e minus one. Sorry, square root of e minus one. Okay, fantastic. But what we can also notice is that we can change this zeroth integral into a single integral by taking the derivative of this with respect to y. So let's go ahead and do that. Now we have the integral from zero to infinity of e to the minus x. Now this will be the integral from zero to the square root of e minus one of Taking the derivative of cosine, we get minus sine, and then by the chain rule, this x will cancel this x. So now we have sine of x, y, dy, dx. I'm gonna take this iterated integral and change it to a double integral. And so this double integral will be the integral from zero to infinity, and then the integral from zero to the square root of e minus one of e to the minus x times sine of x, y, dy, dx. Now I want to leverage the fact that I have the hypotheses necessary to change the order of integration here. So I'll let you guys check that, but that's not too hard to see in this case because e to the minus x and sine x, y are very well behaved functions. So let's go ahead and change the order of integration. That'll give us the integral from zero to root e minus one. And now we have the integral from zero to infinity of e to the minus x times sine of x, y. We've changed the order of integration, so now this is dx dy. Now the next thing that I wanna do is use my tool. So I want to use theta equals x, y, along with the imaginary part of e to the i theta equals sine y. Sorry, theta. So here, I'm gonna change this with imaginary part of e to the i x, y. Great. But now, since this e to the x term is completely real, when we multiply it into the sine x, y, it's gonna be real, but then that means we can bring it inside of this imaginary part operator. So in other words, 
we have the integral from 0 to root e minus 1 of the imaginary part of the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the at minus x plus i x y. Now we're doing dx on the inside and dy on the outside. Where I've used exponent rules in order to combine this exponential with this exponential. Then I've taken the imaginary part out of the integral. Okay, so now let's go ahead and bring that up and then we'll continue to the next step. On the last board, we worked our goal integral down into this form. So we have the integral from zero to the root, square root of e to the minus one of the imaginary part of the integral from zero to infinity of e to the i y minus one times x dx dy. And here I've done a little bit of arithmetic in the exponent here, but that's not too hard to see. Now what I can do is use the fact that I know what the antiderivative of an exponential function is. So it is essentially itself, but then you have to divide by whatever constant you have. In this case, with respect to x, this i, y minus one is a constant. So that allows us to rewrite this as the integral from zero to the square root of e minus one. And now we'll have the imaginary part of one over i y minus one times e to the i y minus one times x. And then we need to evaluate that from x equals zero up to x approaching infinity. And then this is like dy. So I'm putting that x approaching infinity because we're really taking a limit here. Okay, so the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the order of evaluation in order to change the sign on this denominator. That just makes the whole thing work out a little bit more cleanly. So I'll take this x equals zero and replace it with x approaching infinity, this x approaching infinity and make it x equals zero. And doing that, I can replace this with its negative. So its negative will be one minus i y. Good. And then furthermore, I'm gonna go ahead and take this e to the quantity i y minus one times x and break it into um, an imaginary exponential part and a real exponential part. So in other words, I can rewrite this as e to the minus x times e to the i x y. Good. Now I'll go ahead and do my evaluation. So notice if I evaluate at x equals zero, I get e to the zero and then another e to the zero. So that's going to give me one. So x equals zero plugged in here gives me one for this term, which I have overlined in purple. So now bringing this down, we have the integral from zero to the square root of e minus one of the imaginary part. Like I said, our first evaluation will give us one over um, one minus i times y. And now letting x tend towards infinity, we see that e to the minus x tends towards zero. But then the imaginary part of e to the i y will always be between negative one and one given Euler's formula right here. So we don't actually need to worry about that. This is gonna be dominated by the behavior of e to the minus x that's tending towards zero. So which is why I don't need any extra term here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put my dy. Okay, fantastic. And now what I wanna do is work on finding this imaginary part right here. And it's actually maybe not as bad as it looks. What we will do is take this term right here and multiply by the complex conjugate of the denominator. So in other words, I'm gonna multiply this whole thing by um, one plus i y over one plus i y. So let's see what that gives us. So that's gonna give us the integral from zero to root e minus one. I have my imaginary part of one plus i y over, but then one plus i y times one minus i y is exactly one plus y squared. Now I have a dy here. Great, but now taking the imaginary part, we see that well, y is always a real number, which means the only thing contributing to the imaginary part is this i y. So we can get rid of that one, and that's gonna give us this integral from zero to root e minus one of y over one plus y squared dy. And that's a 
integral from maybe the last couple of weeks of a calculus one class. So we would do a fairly simple u substitution to calculate that. Notice the derivative of the denominator is essentially the numerator. The derivative of the denominator is 2y, so we have to include a 1 half to make that work out. So this is going to be 1 half times the natural log of y squared plus 1. We're evaluating that from 0 to the square root of e minus 1. Now if we plug the square root of e minus 1 in there, notice we have e minus 1 plus 1. So we have the natural log of e times one half. Well, the natural log of e is just one, so we have one half when, up, when using the upper bound. And then plugging in the lower bound, y equals zero, we get the natural log of one, which is zero. So our final solution for this integral is one half. And that's a good place to stop.